Alrighty, here we go. We're getting into some area of regular polygons in uh, 11.5. Quite delightful. In fact, there's a second part of this video that will deal with bringing in trig with regular polygons. I mean, if you didn't enjoy regular polygons, now we're going to add trig to it. How exciting! Alright, so our regular polygon formula is, uh, as you see here, one-half times the apothem times the perimeter. So let's think about what the heck this thing means right here. Um, it almost, because of the one half, and we see that a lot with area form, is it almost reminds me of like a triangle, like one half base times height. Well, <clears throat> my apothem is perpendicular to the side. All right, I'm going to put that in there as well. Put a right angle in there. That is a terrible right angle. Let's try that again. Oh, okay, that's a little better. Whatever. So my apothem is perpendicular to that side length. Well, the perimeter right the perimeter is really just all of my side lengths added up right so essentially what we've done here is we've taken the triangle formula and and multiplied by the number of sides okay so if you ever forget these formulas right and you're uh, facing a crucial time in your life of like oh my gosh i've got to figure out the area of this regular polygon or i you know i'm in trouble right well, then, you can always break it down into right triangles, okay? So even if you just found one triangle and you multiplied it by the number of sides, right, you could do that, the number of triangles that are in it. Or you can use this fancy-dancy formula here, one F apothem times perimeter. I'm going to use that one, um, but you don't have to. You could use triangles. As always, we aren't going to give you all the information you uh, absolutely need, but for now, it's just find the area of the regular polygon. And these do need to be regular polygons. Otherwise, that formula won't work. Reason being, you, it's uh, based on having all the same size triangles inside of that regular polygon. So in this case, six regular or six triangles that are all the same size, they're all congruent, uh, multiplied together or added together. Excuse me. Okay. So if this is six, uh, all these side lengths are six. So I'm going to write down perimeter equals 36, but I still need to find my apothem. Uh, so let's figure out how we're going to do that. Well. Here's my center. <clears throat> I'm going to create a triangle. And there's my apothem, right? This guy right here is my apothem. Hmm. Well, these are all considered to be radii of my regular polygon, right? According to the last slide. This is the uh these are both radii of it because it's in the center of the polygon. The polygon is able to be inscribed into a circle, so these would be touching the edge of the circle. So basically I know that those are congruent, therefore I have at least an isosceles triangle, right? And if that's the case, then I know that these two pieces are congruent, therefore it's, it's three, all right? So each one of these guys are three, okay? Um, I've got a right triangle situation going on here. Uh, what else could I potentially know? Ooh, well, if I've got six um, sides, right, uh, could I figure out my central angle? Well, since there's 360 degrees, and I'm dividing that by six, 360 over six, my central angle is 60 degrees. And if I drop that altitude, that means that it's been split. So this is 30 degrees. And this is 60. Oh my goodness, it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle when it's a hexagon. Okie dokie. Well, across from my 30 is my 3, therefore my apothem is 3 root 3, if I remember my 30, 60, 90 triangle. I'm all set. Area equals 1 half times the apothem times the perimeter. Oh, yeah. So let's multiply it all together. First off, I'm not going to mess with that root 3, remember, right? We're going to keep that guy out of it. Um, but I can multiply the rest of it together. Well, 1 half times the 36 is 18. 18 times 3 is going to be 54 root 3 units squared. There's my final answer. All right. How exciting. Bringing back in 30, 60, 90 triangles. Of course we are. Find the apothem of a square with area of 576 square meters. Okay, well this sounds exciting. Well, if my area is 576, um, 
could I figure out my side length of that square? How would I do that? Hmm. So area is 576. Because there's another formula for a square that's just side squared, right? So my side length would be the square root of that, so that's 24 and 24. Okay. Now my center is right here. There's my radius, right? Because that's if my square were to be inscribed into a circle, it would be touching on all four of those vertices, okay? Um, and then there's another radius, and if I drop an altitude, that'll be right there. Well, I think we could probably see that's, and that altitude is my apothem, right? Um, I think I could probably see here that that is going to be half the side length, which is... 12. That is an H, 12. <laughs> All right. Cool. Um, the next thing is, what's the radius of the same square? So now I'm looking for this guy. That's my radius, right? Because that would go from the center to the edge of the circle if it were inscribed in the circle. Well, this I know is going to be half, which is 12. And this is 12 because we already calculated that. So it's an isosceles right triangle. Therefore, it's a 45, 45, 40, uh, 45, 45, 90 triangle. Therefore, we got 12 root 2 meters. All right. Booyah. So we've got them both solved. Excellent. Again, going back to our 45, 45, 90 triangles, 30, 60, 90 triangles. All the good stuff in this one here tomorrow or the next lesson will be trig. All right, so we got to find the area of a square with a radius of 8 centimeters. So let's draw that out here. And there's actually a few ways of doing this one, and I am going to go through a couple of them. So if I drop a radius there, um, that's 8. Same with this guy here. Um, let's see here. Now if I drop this, that's an altitude, or my apothem if I'm using the area equals 1 half apothem times perimeter. <laughs> Okay, hmm, let's see here. I need an apothem, I need a perimeter. Um, well, I guess I do have 45, 45, 90 triangles going on here, right? Um, we already know that because I've taken a 90 degree angle and from the center, it's basically this is a diagonal. If I were to extend it, it's going to bisect it. So I get 45 and 45. So if I divide by root 2, I get... Uh, 8 over root 2, rationalize it, eventually I get to 4 root 2, and 4 root 2. So my whole side is 8 root 2. This right in here is 4 root 2 because it's an isosceles right triangle, those little guys, right? I'm referring to um, these guys right here, this one, isosceles, right? So my apothem is 4 root 2. And my perimeter is going to be 8 root 2 times 4, so that's 32 root 2. So I'm going to write apothem equals 4 root 2, perimeter equals 32 root 2, and I have to just plug that into my formula now. All right, so 1 half apothem, perimeter, and... What I end up with is basically if I do 4 times 1 half, that's 2 times 32, that's 64, square root of 4, so that's really 128 once I've simplified it uh, centimeters squared. All right. Now, <clears throat> that seemed like a real pain in the butt, right? Um, all these roots all over the place is just, ugh. You don't have to necessarily use this formula. Because we're in this video, we're, because we're in the uh, area of uh, regular polygons, I use this formula right here. However, pending the information that you're given, a different formula might be easier to work with. That's why we give you several formulas, and it might be kind of confusing because you're like, well, which one do I use? Well, let's think about this. If I just extend my radius, that's a diagonal of 16, right? Well, let me give myself a little bit more room to work here. If I know a diagonal of a square, my diagonals are first off are perpendicular, so therefore I can use my area equals one half diagonal one times diagonal two, which is my rhombus or kite formula, but as long as my diagonals are perpendicular, it still works for a square. So I could just do one half times sixteen times sixteen, and that's gonna equal 128 centimeters 
squared when I plug that into my calculator or if I can do that in my head. That's not bad. That was way easier, right? So if you notice that, oh, hey, I could use this formula instead, use the formula that's easiest to work with based off the information that you're given. That's the point that I'm trying to make there. This right here, I would never, ever do this again in this particular situation. That was just too much work. This was the easier formula to use, right? Even just finding your side length and doing the normal square formula of 8 root 2 times 8 root 2 would be kind of a pain in the butt, okay? Still having to work with all that stuff. This was the easier one to work with, if you notice. All right, next one. Find the area of an equilateral triangle with radius of 6 inches. All right, so the radius of that thing is 6 inches. This sounds wonderful. Equilateral triangle. Here's my center. My, radi or sorry, my radius is 6 inches. All right, well, if it's an equilateral triangle, my radius will bisect that angle, so then I end up getting 30 degrees for each one. And if I drop my apothem in this case, or an altitude, however you want to think of it, all right, apothem for using the area equals one-half apothem times perimeter formula, which we'll stick with unless there's a better option. I'll recap that at the end. Um, right now, I just have my radius, but across from my 30, I know is half that, and then this is 3 root 3, because it's across from the 60, and I know that this is going to be 3 root 3, so the whole thing is 6 root 3 inches. Okay. Well, I've got the information I need to plug it into this formula, so let's use it. 1 half times my apothem of 3 times my perimeter, which is, in this case, 18 root 3, so a half times 18 is 9, times 3 is 27. I like to simplify in my head if possible as I multiply these all out. Boom, 27 root 3 inches squared. I like it. Um, you know, other, other than that, I think that that was probably the easiest way to go about it. Um, yeah, I mean, there's other ways that you could have done this, but I think they really don't save a whole lot of time compared to this one, so we won't go over it. All right, another equilateral triangle. This time it has an apothem of four. Maybe you could try this one based off the last one and see what you can do from there. All right, so if you have uh, paused it and worked it or if you just are waiting to go through, we're going to do this right now. Um, I, I've got my apothem. I can go ahead and split some things up. Again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw in a radius right there, which I know will make this a 30-degree angle because the equilateral is all 60s. And that radius is going to bisect it. All right. Now, if that's 4, then this is 4 root 3, uh, which makes this 4 root 3. So I've got 8 root 3. So area equals 1 half times my apothem of 4 times my perimeter of, well, 8 times 3 is 24 root 3. So 1 half times 4 is 2 times 24 is 48 root 3 units squared. Not too bad. Alrighty, so that was uh, very exciting, fun, and wonderful, don't you think? Mm-hmm. Alright, here we go. We got a uh, quiz coming up. Um, ignore, uh, right, we got a quiz coming up eventually. Ignore that, though, because the dates do change, but the videos remain the same. But homework, pay attention to that. Good stuff. Excellent stuff. Exciting stuff.